So I'll start off by saying, all power, all power to the people through the people. Yes. Let me take you back just a second to 1966, October, Oakland, California. And tell me if you think there's not uh, a direct correlation between 1966 and 1994 with the Zapatista uprising. 1966 with the founding of the Black Panther Party with the 10 point platform and program. I'm going to read point number one of the what we believe and point number 10. And I believe that it is, it is those two points that says that people who struggle all around the world hear other people's cry of Yabasta enough that point in one's life, in one's people's lives where they have decided they've had enough of the bullshit of the oppression the racist degradation and the economic exploitation to say we are going to take our lives into our own hands. October 1966 Black Panther Party platform and program what we want and what we believe. Point number one. We want freedom. We want the power to determine the destiny of our black community. We believe that people will not be free until we are able to determine our destiny simple doesn't require a rocket scientist when a people decide that they want to be free from oppression is when a new story begins and it needs no other further justification legitimation than to say this is it those who stand in the path of that freedom struggle it is upon that people to figure out a way to move them from that path Point number 10 of the Black Panther Party platform and program. We want land, bread, housing, education, clothing, justice, and peace. And as our major political objective, a UN supervised plebiscite that will be held throughout the black colony, which only black colonial subjects will be allowed to participate for the purpose of determining the will of black people as to their national destiny simple to the point it does not need anyone to further elaborate when we decide what we want and how we want to live the world that we want to create that is our self-determination it goes beyond any bourgeois rights it goes beyond any rights that the American Supreme Courts or anyone else would decide whether they want to give us is when we take it upon ourselves to say it begins now Point number 10 goes into an excerpt from the Declaration of Independence that that white rapist President Thomas Jefferson had written in one of his more inspiring moments. And it says, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands that have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights governments are instituted amongst men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of them ends it is the right of the people to abalter or abolish it and to institute new government laying the foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Let me just read that part again. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted amongst men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, 
that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes, and accordingly, all experience have shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. The Black Panther Party draws from even the sacred documents of the American Revolution to justify its pursuit of a revolution in the United States that will bring total freedom to black people and the total liberation of all oppressed people within the bounds the the bowels of the empire whether it is here within the United States or whether it reaches to the Philippines to Mexico to Brazil to Africa to any other part of Asia that where there's people who are oppressed it is our duty to struggle to change this world and the only justification the only rationalization we need is our desire to want to live the best life that we can and to remove all obstacles in that path as one who was a member of the Black Panther Party and as one who continues to this day to be a revolutionary in the ways that I can uh, the struggle of the Zapatistas has been such an inspiration that it has given me a way to go. It has given me a way to look at making revolution within uh, the United States proper that I had began to lose such an uh, belief. I had began to lose, I had began to experience doubt, and then out of nowhere, out of uh, all the places on the earth where such inspiration could have came from, it came from a brown people, a Mayan people, in the jungles of southeast Mexico, who decided that the NAFTA, neoliberal, new imperialist program for ravishing Mexico was just not going to be. Out of all of these places around the world, here's a struggle of a people that had come across as so creative, so dynamic, that it gave us a way to go at a time where it seemed that the U.S. as number one imperialist power of the world had almost complete control that the more sophisticated forms of 1984 Big Brother had such a clamp on our descent on our rebellion that it could easily crush any movement that might challenge its dominance but here you have a people that were poor a people that had uh, no more role to play in terms of Western technology, Western machinery, Western production, that um, they were just pretty much wiped out. They had said, well, that's enough for us. We want to live. We want to live to the point where if we should disrupt your plans to take our natural resources, then so be it. If it is enough for us to believe in life, that you should shake in the suites of imperial power from New York City or San Francisco or in uh, the on the floor of Wall Street then so be it it is such a great time to be alive again such a great time and I am glad that I am here 
What I would like for you to think about is the fact that we got to go. We have to move. We have to get up. Our energy has to stir. That we cannot stop dreaming. We cannot stop doing those things that affirm life. That we cannot allow even the new forms of oppression that uh, manifest themselves in, in this extreme materialism, this extreme consumerism, uh, and even in our uh, black and brown and, and yellow communities as a more extreme fascist form of the militarization of the police that with all of these things going on as long as we continue to dream there is a possibility of recovering the revolutionary initiative there's a possibility of inspiring each other to move forward all power all power to the people through the people